So beginning of the off season, we got a friend of the show, sports journey writer inside of Jad Draft Guru, who we had that great draft recap show a few weeks back. Dude, Janae, how you doing tonight? Good, sir. I'm doing good. How about you? Uh, I'm doing all right, man. You know, first show back, you know, trying to get back in the groove of things. Got a, had a great first hour, you know, covering a lot of different uh, topics and everything. Thought we'd finish out the show with some uh, some Redskins talk and uh, also some uh, finish up with some Valor info because, uh, as I mentioned, Robbie and myself went to the game. So I figured we'd do a little football this hour. I'll let you uh, just give your quick observations of what you uh, – so, and some of the stuff going on at minicamp, like you said, there's nothing really major, but figure we'll give the Redskins fans something that, you know, some inside information they didn't see on and some of the just reports that came across. Um, uh, like I said, you know, I always say this, it's minicamps and guys are in t-shirts and shorts, so um, <laughs> there's really not a lot uh, going on as far as anything to be overly excited about. Um, you know, you start with the quarterback position, which is, you know, a big topic um, well amongst, you know, roundtables as far as who's going to be starting the first of the year and all that good stuff. But um, Haskins, I mean, just like I said before, all you have to do is look at the guy's tape. I don't think you need to go to his mini camps to know that the guy can spin the ball. Um, it, he had some receivers there, obviously, well, with McLaren that uh, – um, that – that, you know, he's comfortable with. He threw some really nice dimes to him in the corner of the end zone. Um, you know, some nice uh, sideline throws uh, as well. Um, and even Jay himself said the guy can spin it. Uh, but, again, I mean, it, it's nothing that if you look at the tape, it's nothing that you don't know that this guy can't do. Um, but he did impress. And um, we'll see how quickly he grasped the offense. Um, you know, going to Terry uh, McLaren, um his teammate, he also impressed as well. Um, you know, made some really nice catches uh, in traffic, covered very well, um, covered very well by uh, Jimmy Moreland. Um, and, and we'll talk to him, talk about him in a second. But, um, you know, just same thing, same thing. You know, you see this guy on tape, uh, what he brings to the table uh, is, is as advertised. Uh, and, and we'll see how it goes once we get to more, um, you know, training camp and stuff like that. But it's definitely uh, nice to see, uh, you know, these young guys competing um, and and looking how they looked uh, as far as, you know, their pro days, et cetera. So uh, that's always a good sign. Uh, Jimmy Moreland, I think, is probably the guy that, that steals the show because um, you can take more away from what a corner does in those one-on-ones. Um, and sometimes you can do that with the receivers, but, uh, you know, it just depends on what kind of coverage, you know, you're getting from that corner. But uh, Jimmy did an uh, excellent job. Um, he was in there on plays against taller wide receivers, um, knocking the ball away. I think there's some pictures floating around of him doing that, um, you, know, uh, you know, in the bubble. Um, then you, you got a couple plays where he's, he's right there uh, with his guys um, making plays. And I think he's going to, you know, he's, he's showing that he plays bigger than his size. And, um, you know, that's something that's important for the cornerback group. I think something that's been missing uh, for years now. I think that's something that the Redskins thought they were getting in Josh Norman. Um, and, you know, maybe this is something that, that helps somebody like Josh. Uh, he's physical as we talked about before, and uh, he's going to make plays, and he plays bigger than his size. He has a real knack for the football, um, and uh, he definitely showed that he has that, that heat-seeking, uh, you know, hand to be able to get in there and get that football. So um, that that's always nice to see. Um, you know, Harmon, another draft pick, he looked really good. I think a lot of people were really uh, impressed with him. Um you know, you look at Sweat, of course. I mean, again, look at his tape, and that's all you need to know. Um, and, again, they're not doing a whole lot. It's a lot of drills and a lot of different things. But it's getting these guys warmed up and prepared uh, and getting back into shape uh, so that they're not uh, out of shape by the time training camp comes. So this is basically what this time period is for, allow them to get some field work, allow the, um, the coaches to uh, teach the technique and refine 
the technique, uh, and and you know obviously they're spending time in the classroom, uh, uh, learning the playbook and, and understanding where what they are, uh, with what what their position is and what they're going to be asked to do within the confines of the offense and the defense. So um, that's basically all it is. Um, you know, and all these guys look pretty good. Um, and, you know, they're out there working, of course. Uh, and that's always good to see. So uh, we'll see how it all pans out when we've got 11 on 11s and, um, you know, in training camp. But as of right now, this is what we got. And, and guys are doing putting in the work and, and, and looking 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 pretty crisp doing it. So. Yeah, you mentioned Haskins. I saw a, a quote I'm, uh, saying that he loved uh, watching film and uh, breaking things down. Is that true? I don't know if it was a true quote. You know how many stuff is floating around on the Internet. But uh, is that something that uh, that has been reported that he does, you know, like watching film and trying to learn how to break down defenses? And that's something that uh, a young quarterback coming into the league definitely needs to have that type of mindset. Like I said, everybody knows, but I don't because I don't follow college football. That's why we have you on the show. Uh, also, uh, with the wide receiver situation, you know, we've been waiting for someone to uh, step up. You know, Josh Doxson, we know Crowder's no longer here. We saw that the team isn't going to exercise the fifth-year option on Doxson. Uh, you had Trey Quinn who got injured. You had, uh, uh, what's up, uh, what's that, uh, Maurice. Uh, well, who was that? Uh, he's no longer with the team. So what do you with them uh, – yeah, Harris. I couldn't remember his last. That's messed up. He gone to the team. I forgot him that quick. That's bad. But uh, with the with wide receivers, this team is drafting the ones that's on the roster. Uh, how important is it that one of these guys step up? And what's the possibility of that happening, depending on how things go? Because we know it all comes down to game, game planning and play calling to help these guys succeed. But say things do go correct in the play calling department, who do you see that might really, you know, be able to help spark this team's uh, wide receiver core that's been lacking for so long? Um, I I think if Cam, I think if I think if you can have a a guy in uh in, in Harmon, you got you got the height there. Uh, McLaren is a speedster guy; he can run the deep routes. Um, but I think Trey Quinn is a guy that that gets overlooked a lot. Um, I like Cam Sims a lot. Uh, and I thought if he had an opportunity that that he you know could show some things. Obviously, I think I'd like to see him uh, be a little bit better catcher of the football, attacking of the football. Um, but that's why you got a guy like Calvin Harmon. So um, I, I think Trey Quinn falls right into that spot of, of where um, you know that Jameson uh, left off. He also can play too if necessary. I wouldn't bank on that though. Um, you do have Paul Richardson, so I think he's obviously your one. Um, you know, and you know, the, you, you forget about guys like Robert Davis who've been on the the roster um, and they've just been injured. Um, you 
you know, what we I think there's a lot of competition in this by receiver room. I think it's obvious that in some way, shape, or form, uh, Terry McLaurin's going to be on the field. Um, I think his route running skills are, are good enough. Um, obviously, he can catch the ball in traffic. Uh, he, he can play the slot or the two. Uh, so that that's he's interchangeable there, a versatile guy. So that's always a plus. Um, and, again, I think if you just have – all you can ask for is for improvement from Dobson. I, I don't, you know, looking for him to be the number one that he, he was picked as he was picked is uh, probably a, a little bit much to ask at this point. I think you've seen the improvement. Uh, his hands have gotten better as of last year. Uh, he made some pretty good plays and some, uh, I thought he, people were rough on him last year, but he made some plays last year, some clutch plays last year um, in some tough situations where he normally would put the ball in the ground. So, um, you know, with that wide receiver core and you add you, the guys who were there and then you add, you know, a, a Harmon, a, a McLaurin to, to this this uh, our, this group, I think you're going to have a higher level of competition. And obviously I think adding those two amongst guys who didn't play in Cam Sims, I think Robert Davis has yet to have shown what he can do, but I think he has potential. Um, you know, I think they're going to be okay. And really, at the end of the day, I mean, we always talk about, you know, having these big wide receivers and all this this uh, ex- exceptional talent. But, I mean, we see teams around the league work with less and do more. So um, it's, about, it's about scheming. It's about execution, more importantly, and uh, uh, not being, uh, uh, what's the, I'd say, telegraphed as far as what you're doing offensively in the passing game. So... Um, you know, and if these guys can execute uh, and and execute and run crisp routes and be where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there, and obviously catch the ball, I think that'll help out a lot. And I think that's where the Redskins have suffered a lot is that guys just start coming down with the football, and then at times they're just not where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. Um, you know, and then this causes turnovers, interceptions, things like that. So, you know, every everybody blames the quarterback for a lot of stuff, but you have to understand timing is everything, and timing and rhythm is something that's very important. And a lot of these West Coast offenses um, and a lot of their scheming like to do to open things up and get a rhythm going, a lather going, so to speak, in that passing game to start, you know, uh, mixing in other things that can cause the defense to, to be on their heels. So, um, you know, if they can get that down, this receiving core has a lot of potential. And I, I like the heights now that they have uh, in hand skills that they have, these two draft picks, obviously. Um, it, it's going to be fun to watch, I think. So we'll, we'll see. But I think they have several combinations that, that can be successful. All right. Well, very rarely we have a caller calling in. They've been patiently waiting online, so I'm going to take a chance and see if this caller has a question for Dujan about some Redskin stuff. Let's see how this goes. Sports of the Hill podcast, how are you doing tonight? What's going on, Carol? It's Nakia. Ah, Nakia. Ah, no. I knew that number looked for me. I was looking at it. I was like, it looks familiar, but it doesn't. I seen the 757. I was like, okay. How are you doing tonight, Nakia? I'm good. So what do you want to talk about tonight? Talk to some Redskins, get some uh, some venting off your chest, or talk about the draft? We haven't spoken in a while about some Redskins stuff. Yeah, I always want to talk about my Redskins. What do you think the, you know, the possibility is, you know, for what we're going to look like next year? I've heard a lot of different things, you know, from – a lot of different people, you know, about what they think. And, you know, do you think that, you know, we're going to, we've improved ourselves, we are going to stay stagnant, or we're going to decline? <laughs> uh, folks that don't know, this is Nakia Miller, true, another true radio network uh, co host. She's on True Talk on Tuesday nights sometimes. And uh, she's a friend of the network and friend of the show. 
Uh, it's all going to, to me, before I let Dujanay, I know Dujanay's probably going to have a better uh, answer than I will, so I'll let him uh, answer that question better. But to me, it's going to come down to injuries. You know, this team hasn't stayed healthy for a while, so we really don't know what this team truly is. You see the, you see the talent on paper, but until we can get a full season out of these guys to see what they can really do, then we really can't judge and see where this team is going to fall at. I feel the same thing that this, the, this draft, was a good draft, and the last few drafts have been good. It's just they haven't been able to stay healthy and to, you know, actually put a good product out there on the field. So I think this team has a chance to, you know, do well. I'm not saying make the playoffs, but at least be above 500. We know how the NFC East is, how competitive it is. Sometimes you get one team, sometimes you get three teams in the playoffs. So it all depends. But uh, I like what they're doing. If they can stay healthy, and the new play caller gets the call plays the way he likes and Jay doesn't overrule him. I, I'm anxious to see what this team will be. Dujanay, what do you say? Um, you know, injuries are obviously have been the Achilles heel for this team. Uh, they were 6-3 and three last year, and I think that goes remiss because of the, the drastic fall-off afterwards. But you have to understand when you lose that many people, inside the trenches, it makes it difficult, and then you lose your quarterback on top of that. So now no protection for the guy who's going to stand back there um, amongst all the other issues you have with bringing in a guy off the street to have to run your offense. So that, that's that been difficult for them, and that's the first thing that's got to be eliminated. They have to stay healthy. Um, I think if you look at the talent that they've drafted over the last couple of years, um, and before you even look at this draft, they have enough talent on this football team to, to to be able to make some noise and to be at least be able to be a playoff team. And do they win a playoff game? Uh, who knows? But at least to be able to be a playoff team. Um, and now you add this draft that's more talent and more bodies in rotation with quality, talented guys, young guys who can make plays uh, and hopefully make plays for you. Uh, in the, on defense and on offense, and that should correlate in, into um, more success. Now, will that happen immediately? It depends on how quickly they gel or how quickly things come together because there's a fine line between being a very young team uh, and, and not having a lot of veteran leadership and, and then having a young team with uh, that sprinkle, that, that, that perfect sprinkle of veteran leadership. Uh, if those veterans can stay healthy, you have people like uh, Adrian Peterson on this team. Uh, obviously, you have the big guy, Trent Williams, who's been with this team for a long time. Um, you have some guys on the defensive side of the ball. You look, uh, you know, you have to give Josh Norman his props uh, for, you know, at least being a guy who's, who's a, uh, a guy who leads by example and puts in the work day in and day out. Um, and nobody knows the countless hours that guy spends after practice working on his craft. So um, I think this team has that. Now it's just going to be a matter of whether they can gel together and how uh, well the quarterback plays. Um, you know, I've said it before. I think it's an open competition. Uh, Case Keenum could very well start the season. Um, I think that's probably the best option. But, again, I, I'm all for if, if the guy, whoever wins the battle, is the starter. So um, with that being said, it's just a matter of the quarterback doing what the quarterback done over the last several years. Um, obviously, you want to get more touchdowns, but you got to protect the football, and you can't turn it over in critical moments. And if they can do that, I think this team has just as good a chance as anybody else because I don't see another team better than them uh, when you look at them on paper uh, other than the Dallas Cowboys. And I know people don't like that, but um, the facts are facts. They, they've had a top five defense, top ten defense for several years now. Um, and their offense is inconsistent due to their coach. But when you got the defense that they they have, uh, that's why they're they're hanging around eight and eight and getting in the playoffs because of it. Um, and I, I, you know, Eagles are a question mark. Really, don't know what you're going to get because Carson Wentz can't stay healthy. And the Giants, well, I mean, they're the Giants. They they let every big thing they had go, um, with the exception of Saquon. So uh, you know, they and. It could be a surprise, but right now, looking at these guys on paper, uh, Washington's the second best team in this division, and it, it's a no, it's a nose to nose thing between them and the Cowboys because you could make a case for the Redskins being uh, the, the best, you know, the top team 
uh, as far as coming into this season after all the shakeup. So um, main thing is quarterback. So we'll see. But I think they have a good shot. Um, you know, if you had to ask me for a prediction right now, I, I, I'd be 7-9, and 8-8 eight and eight right now. Um, it's, there's a lot of question marks and there's a lot of things that have to go well. And then you look at their schedule the first half of the year, it's brutal again. Um, you know, I think – I think the NFL hates the Redskins <laughs> because I don't think anyone has has a brutal schedule, as brutal of a schedule as they do year in and year out. Um, so we'll see. You know, time will tell. But uh, I, if if you're a Redskins fan and you're looking to see if there's going to be an upward trend, I think you have to think that uh, regardless of what the record may show, uh, you look at the scrappiness and the play on the field, and I think it'll show. And I think that's one reason why Jay is still here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jay, you, well, I'm not even going to get into this. I'm not even going to get in that conversation. I'm trying to stay in a good mood. It's off season. I didn't want to get into the Jay Gruden conversation because you know how I feel about Jay to turn a whole different direction. But uh, it's, uh, like you said, it's going to come hard to... Say what? You hard on the man. Oh, come on. <laughs> man, I'm tired of seeing the inconsistency, man. That's all. That's my only thing, man. The inconsistency. This team has no identity because if they get down seven to ten points, he throws whatever game plan they had out the window, and then he just starts throwing the ball, you know, around. This new guy that's supposed to be calling the plays is supposed to be some up-and-coming guy. So I'm hoping that he lets him do it because we saw what happened when he had Sean McVay here. He put handcuffs on him, and then now he's in L.A. going to the Super Bowl, you know, losing to the Patriots. But, hey, he made the playoffs and made it to the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I'm anxious to see. I've heard stuff, you know. I've listened to, uh, read some of your reports that you put out there about Jay. And I've been checking out, you know, some of the reports and some of the press conferences. So hopefully he's finally got it. It's, you know, taking a, long, a little bit longer than I would, would like, but he, he's got it. Uh, Nikia, you have any other questions yeah, for Dizzy? Yeah, I mean, the stats don't lie, though. The stats don't lie mm-hmm. on him as far as when McVay was, when McVay was calling the plays and, 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 you know, when he was calling the plays, the offense ran smooth. We all know that I just think as a head coach, and I've always said this, you know, as a head coach and as for him, I think he has a tendency of overthinking things. Um, and because you're, you're not only responsible for – you're, you know, you're the head coach, so you're doing all these other things. And I think it's the worst thing in the world. Some guys can do it. Some guys can be the head coach and and, and be the be the offensive coordinator. For him, I, I just don't think that that's for him. Uh, and you saw that with McVay being there and calling the shot. Um, it, it worked out so much better for him, uh, and things were a lot smoother. So I, I think they understand that, and I think that's why their promotion here was uh, – was warranted, and he's, uh, I, you know, yeah. if anybody is is a guy who would have been snatched up like McVay was, um, it's, it's him. And I think this is a, it's a positive move. It's the right move. And, uh, you know, ho- hopefully this, this thing with Kevin O'Connell can, can work out. But, uh, you know, I really believe there's just some coaches that, that, need that need that coordinator to help them because they have so much stuff going on as a head coach, and he's just not able to manage it all. And, uh, it, you know, it, it shows up. It definitely shows up, especially when they get down. It seems like he feels pressure uh, to, to, to try to get it all back in one spiel. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, with O'Connell being the offensive coordinator, things will be a little bit more balanced and they'll, they'll learn to stick to uh, the run game. Because, I mean, let's face it, they have a pretty uh, stout, um, you know, a stout running back group right now uh, that has extremely high potential. Totally agree, totally agree. Well, I've always said he's an AFL coach and I get into some valid talk after he finishes his Redskins talk. So, I mean, hopefully this O'Connell guy can, you know, do what he do. Because like you said, I, I'm I'm upset, like I say, with his not sticking with the run. You have, you know, good running backs. You have a line that excels at running the ball, but yet and still you don't run the ball. So let me get Nakia back on real quick, see if she has another wrap-up question before we let her out of here. Nikia, anything else you want to ask our, uh, our insider before we let you go? Um, no, I don't think I can think of at this moment. All right. Well, as always, we appreciate you calling in. 
and uh, checking out. We know how passionate of a Redskin fan you are. I've read some of your posts, and I've, <laughs> I've had to take a step back, like, wow, she really meant that. But uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, we'll okay. definitely talk to you again at uh, football season coming around. Appreciate you calling in, calling in whenever you want to. All right, well, you have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, let's see. Get her back in the listeners now. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to get in some valid talk a little bit later on. Uh, Dujane, let the folks know what you're working on and uh, what you got coming out. I know you got some interesting articles coming out with all the, the rookie minicamp stuff. Yeah, we'll just be talking about, you know, a lot of the players that they drafted and just talking about how they fit in. Uh, everything's on sportsjourney.com, and uh, you can follow me at not been, not bland 21 on Twitter. Um, always love talking shot with you guys, so uh, always always up for Redskins talk. So. Hey, man, as always, appreciate the insight. Always appreciate the insight. Because you always give us a good insight and good point of view that we don't get from uh, anywhere else in this area, so we appreciate it. I had a couple of guys chiming in. Got Mario Marshall saying the Jets are going to go 13-3. and three. Uh, that's that's a very ambitious uh, prediction. Uh, but man, man, Joe, he's been on the trade for a while. He said the Redskins ten and six. So uh, it's a little early for me. I'm not going to say anything because I want him to get through training camp and preseason without injuries. Then I'll make my prediction. So uh, I'll wait for that. But uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting season. Uh, got a lot of lot of things going on with this team. Hopefully, it's going to trend in a good direction and. Hopefully this team can make the playoffs and, you know, I'm not saying Super Bowl or bust, but at least make the playoffs. You know, I I would like to uh, attend a home playoff game. It's been a while since I went to one. You know, I didn't make the the most recent, but uh, I've been to a couple and I would like to go again. Yeah, that's it starts with injuries. You know, we, we talked about that. It just starts with injuries. I, I think I think fans are 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 tired of the almost uh you know almost getting there or having the the great starts and the awful finishes um and that's that's understandable but this team just hasn't stayed healthy and that plays you know it's not an excuse but it plays a extremely huge role when you got to call on guys not just off the street guys but then you have to call on guys that are are young that have to grow up in a hurry that you were looking at that yes they they have great potential but they're right now they're filler pieces you know they're they're guys who come in and spell you or they come in and they make plays you have things designed for them and then you have to count on them to do everything and they're just not there you know what i mean some of these guys just aren't there yet uh so um hopefully if they can stay healthy i think they have a really good shot of uh, making some noise in the division. Most definitely, most definitely. You mentioned Josh Norman before I get into Valor Talk. I'll use that as a segue. He was actually at the uh, Balor game, the uh, championship banner raising, because his little brother plays cornerback for the Washington Valor, and he had a hell of an interception. I'm still working on the footage. I haven't got the video out from uh, us having a... a press credentials and checking out the footage behind the scenes and everything. I'm still, I'm going to try to get that out tomorrow. I'm going to work on it tomorrow. But his uh, younger brother made a hell of an interception in that game. It was uh, early in the game, but they uh, prevailed. I know you're not, uh, I don't Do you want to stick around for some uh, Arena League football talk, Dujanae? I know you probably got an article or something to work on. I'll give you that option to get up out of here before I talk a little bit of Valor. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't catch much of <laughs> Arena stuff. I, I caught a little bit of what you guys shot, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know much about what's going on over there at all. <laughs> well, it's very it's very interesting. We actually met a fan of the Arena League, and uh, he gave us a lot of information. He's been following the league for a while, so it's definitely growing. Uh, they're trying to get the fan base up, but they're actually uh, broadcasting the games on ESPN3 now, so it's uh, definitely uh, – yeah. It's definitely a good event. I've, I've been telling folks, uh, we were saying them it's a family-friendly event. The tickets are, you know, not expensive. You know, they got a lot of interactive stuff going on. They keep the crowd involved, you know, music playing throughout. So it's definitely a interesting thing to do, especially in the off season with no real football. Not going to say it's not real, but no NFL football, I'll put it like that. But all right, Dujanae, I'll let you get out of here, and I'll wrap up the show with the Valor talking and, and uh, get ready for 
whatever else I'm going to watch tonight. I got some baseball on right now, and I got some wrestling on. So who knows what I might get into tonight. But as always, appreciate you taking the time, man. I'll talk to you soon, bro. All right, man. All right. Thank you. All right. As always, we thank Dujanae for taking the time out. He always has great insight, great knowledge, and always puts out great articles with all the insight that we need to know about the Redskins that you don't get from us. You can check it out with him. Uh, let's talk a little bit of Washington Valor. As I mentioned, Robbie and myself went to the uh, home opener. They were 0-2 going into this game. They uh, raised the banner for the championship that they won last year in the Arena Bowl against Baltimore. And they beat the Atlantic City uh, what was, uh, Black Knights, I believe, 41-34. to It was a very uh, entertaining game. The Valor took off the uh, took off early with a 6 nothing lead. They missed the extra point. And Atlantic City uh, took the lead 7-6. to But after that, the Valor took over. As I mentioned, that uh, interception that Josh Norman's younger brother made, I, haven't, I forgot to look up his name. That's on me. But... Uh, it was definitely entertaining game. Robbie and myself had a great time. As I mentioned, we met a fan at Arena League that uh, said he'd been traveling. He went actually up to the Atlantic City for their home opener. He was going all the way up to Philly because that was the closest Arena League team before uh, Leonsis bought the uh, Valor here and the Brigade. And come to find out, he also owns a team in Ohio. So apparently there's two owners in the league that owns the six teams. And they're definitely... Uh, Trying to get more uh, viewership. Like I said, the deal with ESPN3 was definitely huge for the uh, viewership. We're going to definitely be pushing their uh, their product because, like I said, it's a family-friendly event. You know, it's a lot of fun. You know, you can uh, go on the field after the fact, get autographs from the players. Um, like I said, it's a good time. About what well, we game started about seven fifteen was over by nine thirty nine forty five. So it was a nice life for the evening, but it was definitely a great game. They have a young up-and-coming uh, quarterback, uh, Nelson, I believe his last name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his first name, but he looked pretty good. The defense played well. They got a couple of stops, got that nice interception, as I said earlier, that stopped the momentum of Atlantic City. And as I said, I'll be working on the footage. I'm going to try to get you know finished up tomorrow and get the video out from some of the footage we got from behind the scenes and the banner raising and uh, some of the on the uh, – down on the sideline if you didn't, you know, watch the game live or watch the rebroadcast that's already been through there. But it was definitely a, a, a good experience. I believe they have a home game this uh, Saturday. I have to check with the press coordinator. But we're definitely trying to get down to Capitol when I got to check my schedule and see how things going. But uh, definitely going to try to get down there to shoot you some more behind-the-scenes footage, cover the Valor, and uh, have more extensive coverage like you get nowhere else because no one else talks about all of the Washington teams like we do. But that's why we're here, to bring you the best D.C. sports coverage that you're going to get anywhere else in the DMV because, let's be honest, the rest of them suck. I'm not even going, I'm not even going to fake. But it's definitely us need to go out and support the Valor. It was a pretty good attendance uh, turnout. Uh, they had the Arena League champs go down there, support the team. It's a good product. It's fun. And it's football. Why not? Yeah, Robbie. There you go. Arvell Nelson. That's what it is. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. But uh, he's been putting up good numbers. He uh, We shot his press game, uh, post-game presser, when, uh, asking some questions after the game. And he was with the team last year. You know, it was a lot of flux with injuries. They got hot at the right time in the playoffs and won the championship. Uh, they started out a little slow. But as he mentioned, they uh, – after the banner raising, they were able to put, you know, get it together, go out to get a first victory of the season. Now they're putting that behind them and moving forward. So, like I said, they have a game this weekend. We're going to go check it out and make sure we root on the Valor and see if they can uh, get the 500. Uh, let's see. Corey said they agree. We make it through the training camp OTAs with no injuries. It can be uh, probably say how many wins we have because the more bad than they are the team I had. Uh, Basically saying it's too early to make predictions. I agree. Uh, Robbie says uh, Josh Norman's brother is Mario. No, that's his name, Mario Norman. Uh, said he showed faster than his. Uh, said he's faster than uh, Josh, and he showed it. Uh, we know Josh is a little bit older, so you know he he lost. I ain't gonna say he lost a full step. He might have lost a half a step or a quarter step. But you know it's good to see you know him out there supporting his brother. I wish we could have got over there and got a picture or something with him, but we were on the other side, so not even gonna worry about it. But, uh, yeah, we got a uh, 
I'm gonna see if we can get a picture of that interception. Try to get it up there. I think I got some footage on the big on the big screen. I'll try to get out there when I put in the footage. But I'm gonna definitely work on that tomorrow and try to get it out as soon as possible. We have a full slate of shows back on, as I mentioned earlier. We'll have a True Talk tribute show to Black GOP tomorrow night starting at 8. And as I mentioned to uh, earlier, Hertz House will be making his comeback this Wednesday at 8 o'clock. He's coming back to the network with his unedited, unadulterated Redskins coverage like you get nowhere else. So make sure you check him out this Wednesday at 8 o'clock on True Radio Network because he's coming back and he's coming back with a vengeance. So y'all make sure y'all tune in. And... uh on that note, it's about 8.40. I got uh, MLB Network. Milwaukee's currently up 2 nothing on Philly, but uh, they just Philly just got a hit with the man on. It's 2 on, no out, and the bottom of the first game just started. So we're gonna probably going to check out some baseball tonight, maybe watch a little bit of hockey if any of you want. I haven't checked the schedule. But appreciate y'all tuning in. As I say, I'm going to put the valid footage out probably hopefully tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest. But appreciate you guys. Check out the Facebook live feed. We do this every week. So make sure you follow us. Make sure you like our page. Make sure you share our posts. Let folks know it's real D.C. sports coverage out here. Covering Redskins, Nationals, Capitals, Wizards, United. Cover it all. Appreciate Brian Brennan coming on, talking United, talking some baseball, talking some NBA. Appreciate it as always. Uh, Robbie said, uh, yeah, I mentioned it's uh, six teams and Ted owns the Columbus one now. Yeah, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Oh, it's Ron Jaworski owns the other team. I forgot he was in the league. Yeah, Robbie, you always got some good information. Appreciate it. But uh, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Appreciate it. Make sure you check out the website, SportsOTHB, SportsOTHP.com, with all our updated shows, archives, and everything. Make sure you check out the tribute show tomorrow night on True Talk. First hour will be host, uh, you know, talking about the man, second hour. It'll be open for calls, 347-884-9299, as always. Uh, possibly someone will be doing a Facebook live feed. Uh, I'll probably call in. Not sure how long I'll be on, but I'll definitely call in. I've done tributes last night and tonight, so I don't have a problem doing one one more night for the man. So appreciate y'all checking us out. SportsOTHP.com, True Radio Network, CP3, live from the lab. Appreciate y'all.